All right, so here we go. This is a laminar flow hood. I designed and built these out of wood. Uh, reason being, you get much more cost effectiveness out of this and much more volume than the pretty high priced uh, metal ones or plexiglass ones. If you're looking to design your own or, you know, just get an idea of what these are. So, you know, feel free to take some ideas off this one. I do sell these. So if you'd like to just skip the build, just go ahead and there'll be a link in the description below. Um, all right, here we go. So it's constructed out of half inch sand ply. It's uh, relatively moisture resistant. You also get a laminate you can put on the base down here. So it'll take care of most of your spills. Um, you got two intake filters on the top. Uh, these guys right here and those take care of most of the, the particulates going through the exhaust filters and then air is forced down here through these HEPA filters and you get clean air passing over so no bacteria and you know microscopic stuff coming into your your uh, plants or your, your mycology mushroom stuff so uh, you get some dampers so as you lift the lid it'll just hold up for you as you clean or replace your filters down here the exhaust fans are hooked up to a control box it's got a terminal block in there and it's hooked up to a fan controller so all you do is set to your high medium or low it's got plenty of power and just hooks up to your normal 120 volt um, outlet so i'll go over the basic construction of this next um, so if you bought one you can go ahead and follow along or you know if you're looking to design one you know feel free to you know take some design ideas off this but you got some self-drilling or self-tapping screws so it's very easy the holes are pre-drilled so you know exactly where to screw these in you just hold it to where it needs to be and then just zip it in and i'll go over the assembly next all right so before the assembly i just want to go over the component list real quick so this will be what comes with the kit um or if you're just building your own it'll give you an idea as to what you're going to need or may or may not need so to start off you got two exhaust fans and that's what's used to force the air through and you get six intake filters so those go on top of the exhaust fans so filters the majority of the incoming you know big particulates and whatnot those are just held on by little velcro tabs you just put on the four corners of those and just you know stick it on so those those adhere directly to these um, and that prolongs the life of your filters so you get two HEPA filters they filter down to 0.3 micron so plenty good for growing plants and, and mushrooms um, you get two light bars and those have three dimmable settings as well as an automatic turn on turn off so you just set the amount of hours you want it on and off you get a couple hinges for the lid and then two port covers so those you feed your wires through this little hole right here in the back you get a couple dampers so you can hold your lid up as well as it does a soft close so you can while you're cleaning your your filters or exchanging them uh, keep your lid up and you got a terminal block which hooks, hooks the power up and those that's put into the control box and that hooks up to your power cord and at the end of the power cord you plug it into here and then this into the outlet and this is your fan controller so you got high medium low so I'll give you a little bit of control for your airflow. Um, you got a laminate you put on the base, so it'll keep water from you know seeping into your your, your wood and easily cleanable. Um, there's a fan guard you put on the underside of the exhaust and keep your your fingers safe. So next we'll go over the assembly. All right, so here's the assembly video. I'll be speeding. I'll be speeding it up and back down just to add quick notes and whatnot. However, um, one thing super important: make sure you have a power drill, not an impact drill or anything. Um, that has a torque setting and you set it to at least three or below depending on the type of drill you have uh, You'll be screwing in these self-tapping screws on the sides Into the edges of the plywood. So if you tear it out It's gonna be all bad. So make sure that that's the case uh, another important thing just while you're assembling all the pre-drilled holes are going to be on the outside of the box So make sure that that's the case. Otherwise, you'll have to take it apart and assemble. So to start out with you're gonna have the baseboard. So this baseboard, it'll be denoted by these one, two, three, four, five, six holes. And that's where the rubber feet are gonna be going. So have this side face down. However, don't put the rubber feet on yet. You're gonna want a flat surface. So to align all your panels, your back and side panels. Um, all right, so let's get it, get it going. So uh, here's the left-hand side. If you don't know which orientation it is, just take a quick, uh, look at the quick guide and then it'll kind of give you a, a good idea as to where it goes. The back panel, all you're going to be doing is fixing it or pressing it and then you'll be screwing it in. You could do all the screws at once or just one by one, uh, one in and then once you get everything aligned then go ahead and, and screw it all together.
All right. So after you've got your side panels and your back panel on, uh, you can go ahead and put your rubber feet on. Um, and after that, you'll put this guy on, and this just seats right in here, right into the notches. And it has a bunch of counter sinks on the outside perimeter to allow the lid to close flat. So you're going to switch your screws to the number eight, one half inch long screw. And all you do is you're going to hold it together. And just screw it in. There we go. And use an even lower setting. Basically, just use the lowest setting you can um, so you're not tearing it out. And make sure that that screw head goes below the surface face. I'll just finish this up. It also helps if you have a longer extension for your Phillips. Uh, just at least on the outside uh, panels, it seems to help out. And you can go ahead and glue if you have some wood glue while you're uh, before you screw everything together, just to make it that much more of a solid box. But depending on what you're using it for, it should hold up. Um, and you can always silicone it after. So. Throw the rubber feet on and then go ahead with instructing the lid. So your lid construction after you got everything assembled on the uh, body, your lid construction is going to be in this orientation. You got your main panel, your two side panels, your front panel, and your back panel. That's where the hinges go. Uh, just make sure all your pre-drilled holes are facing all on the outside of the lid. So you're going to be drilling from the outside to the inside. So um, they can fit the other way. So make sure you're, you're being careful on that. So you construct it uh, in this manner. So you could set your side panels up and then just slot them in um, and then just build the lid upward like that. Or you can flip everything over, but make sure if you're doing that, everything's in the correct orientation. So we'll go ahead and do that. Alright, so this is what the lid looks like all put together. I got the logo on the front. Uh, everything's all screwed together nice and tight. Uh, make sure you are, again, using the lowest setting on your, your drill, otherwise there will be some tear out. And then if that is the case, maybe uh, use a longer screw. So this just fits on just like this. And the front end. front end will shim right between these end flanges on each side. It just shims in right like that. Just butt it up together and then you'll throw the hinges on um, and then we can go ahead with the electronics afterwards. Alright so next we're going to be putting on the hinges on the back. There'll be six pre-drilled holes with a notch on the back and that notch is where the pin goes on the hinge. Try to orient the head of the pin to the outside. That uh, makes the hinge fit better. Um, I keep it loose while I'm installing, so you get all the screws in, and then just orient the hinge in the correct place in that notch, a little bit lifted, and then tighten it down. We have the hinges installed. Hold off on installing the spring dampers that go right here, so you have more access to the underside of the lid. So next we'll install the fan guard and the exhaust fan. So to install the fan guard, 
go ahead and prop open the lid to access the underside with something you got lying around. You're going to unroll it, and then as you're screwing it in, you're going to be stretching it out so it keeps it taut. Uh, you'll have three screws in a row right here, three in the middle, and then three at the end there. The screw type you're going to be using are these truss heads, the uh, number eight half inch with the fender washers. It'll ultimately look something like this. Three in a row there, there, and there. So fan guards installed. Uh, I first evened everything out and then I installed the middle row. As I pulled it tight, I would install the side rows. No, there's no pre-drilled holes for the, the bottom here, so you just kind of have to eyeball it. This is what it looks like from the top. And next we'll go ahead and install the, the fans that go on top. And for those, they have pre-drilled holes all along the perimeter, so it'll be quick and easy. I'm going to be mounting the exhaust fans on top of the laminar flow hood. So it comes with two exhaust fans, a terminal block. Uh, screws, these are truss screws to mount the housings down on top and the holes are pre-drilled right there. Um, you got a control box and a power cord that's attached to the fan controller. So fan controller goes into the wall, um, plugs in right there, and then power cord is fed through this control box in this hole. And then each fan is hooked up to the terminal block that goes right here. Terminal block has screws like this that mount right through here, right through the back, and then into the laminar flow hood. Those holes are not pre-drilled. Wherever it kind of sits, you'll just drill it and uh, mount it down there. And we'll go ahead and do that. The fans installed. So just to go over the electrical, I kept the terminal block loose and I plugged in one side, basically screw down a wire to each terminal. There's four terminals, so you'll only use three. Um, that one's extra, so if you're adding another thing later on, you, you have that available. Now, uh, you can use either side and any color orientation, but you have to match the color orientation with both sides. So the terminals uh, connect right across. So I used green, white, black. And when I hooked up this side, I did green, white, black. However, on this side, I took the power cord, the leads from the power cord, and I put them into the same terminal. So right here, there's two greens, two whites, two blacks on this side. And then I just did green, white, black on this side. And go ahead and install your covers. Oop. And hook it up to power and just give it a little test. And it works great. So next, we'll install the HEPA filters as well as the top intake filters. Uh, for the intake filters, just put the Velcro tabs, just stick them down right on the corners. Grab your filter, place it over top, and then just go ahead and press that filter on all four of the corners and it'll suck it down and filter out the big particulates as uh, for air is forced. It'll uh, prolong the life of your HEPA filter. So after this, We'll put the HEPA filters in and just make sure that these gaskets are face down. So face downward, so it'll look something like that inside the, the lid. And then after that, we'll just go ahead and install the spring dampers and the laminate and we should be done. What your damper kit's gonna look like, you're gonna have two dampers, a bunch of screws, two rectangular uh, mounted spheres, and then two circular. So I'll go ahead and take one of each, and then we'll get the screws in a bit, get a damper, and you'll mount it in this orientation. So there's three screw holes right here, and then two down here. You'll mount it in this orientation. The holes are pre-drilled, so you put the sphere one up here on the lid, and then the rectangular one in this orientation right down here. All right, we'll go ahead. This is what it looks like when it's fully installed. And just a quick note, find a flathead 
or something like a knife, um, go ahead and insert it right in the back here, and then just lever it so it pulls that band back just a tad, and that allows it to push onto the sphere a lot easier. So we'll go ahead and finish out the other side and get to the lights. we're going to be installing the LED lights. So I flipped it up so you guys could see better, but you could do it right side up. Um, there's three different options. You have, you have screws that cope with it. So these are small little pan head screws and those just mount into these holes right here and you could place it wherever you like, you know, depending on the application. You also have double sided tape and then those you just stick to the back right here and then just stick it wherever you need it on the inside. And then you also have zip ties. So I'm going to go ahead with the zip tie route and I'm going to zip tie it in this orientation right to this bar here so there's enough spacing between the filter and the wood here that uh, I won't interfere um, and just make sure you orient it so the cord can be fed out straight through this back hole right here and there is a plug cover that you just go ahead and press in and there's one on the outside as well so I'll go ahead and do it that way and fed the cord through. I uh, fed the USB through the cover so I could put the cover on and then plugged it in. It's got power so we can go ahead and give it a test. And that looks good. Now there's dimmable settings as well as a timer. So there's a two, four, and eight hour timer. So you could turn that on every day a certain amount of time. So I'll throw the lamination on the base down here and that should be it. There we are, so fully assembled laminar float hood. The build took about an hour. A lot of nice features on this one, but if you're building your own, please feel free to kind of take some ideas as to how you're gonna build yours. But if you'd like to purchase it and skip the build, just link in description, it'll go to my store. So a lot of nice features, you get the lights, the HEPA filters, 0.3 micron, and intake filter, two fans. You get the dampers so the lid just lifts up. Uh, you got the adjustable lights so you could time it, and you can easily clean this laminate right here for any spills and such, but the wood is pretty resistant to moisture. So we can go ahead and test it. We'll just turn it on. And on the high setting, it is pretty powerful. You can feel the air just flowing right past. You can always turn it down and just have a nice steady stream. So cloning, growing mushrooms, so anything you'd like to use it for. This is uh, approximately three feet by one and a half and one and a half feet tall. So any uh, table you can easily fit it on but thanks for watching that's the build i appreciate it have a nice day